This is smithy.tv. All right, so it is the Mind Reels on Smithy.tv. I'm Tim. With me is always a Sue. Hello. We uh, <laughs> we had a week and a half there where we were not even in the same country, no. and we were covering film festivals. Someone was in a warmer country. I was in a warmer country, and Someone I'm was here. peeling, and yeah, but, and I'm very white. but you were covering real, real world. world. Yeah. And what did you see? What was the best thing? What was the what was the favorite thing you saw? I looked it up because all of a sudden I was drawing <laughs> a blank on like, yeah, and I remembered because everything I watched, it almost it, it was like I was just liking each one better and better and better, and um and I love how that works out. Yes. <laughs> uh, but my favorite one, the one that affected me the most, was called Cairo six seven eight. It was from Egypt, obviously. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and it was basically about three different women and how they handle different. Um, Types of sexual harassment and abuse wow. in the country, and and the, the general attitude towards women that in the country, really and the, I believe the case number of the very first sexual harassment suit that was filed by a woman against a man was called six seven eight. Huh. So that's where the number came from. But it was pretty bad. It was like some of it was kind of funny, some of it was heartbreaking, some wow. of it was like disturbing and yeah, <laughs> I've done that much. angry, and sometimes you just want them to. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was That's very awesome. very well done, and it was it, some of the stuff was like not even that far off of what you would see now. Like especially, I, I mean, like with the he said she said rape cases and stuff. Like there's so much that comes down to wow. what happens between two people in a closed room that. Even when the law like technically supports it, it doesn't necessarily because there's a whole lot that has to happen before it goes to court. So wow. Yeah, it was very powerful. Cool. I believe I have the DVD screener. Ooh, I might have to borrow that. Too. But I saw I, I was in I was in Bermuda. Let's just get that out of the way. Bermuda. Thank you. My name is freaking Bermuda. That's right. And uh, I saw a bunch of them that I loved. There was a documentary called In the Hour of Victory, which was uh, just a series of letters that Major Toby Smith had written back to his wife in Bermuda. Like he'd grown he'd grown up there. The whole thing. But he had been killed in the Battle of Overloon. So all that was left was his side of the letters that he'd written. And his grandson found them and published a book of them and then made the movie to go with it. And it was just... Wow. It was so good. <laughs> and then I saw one called Beyond the Hills, a Romanian film, based on an actual incident of a woman who was possessed. But uh, in actuality, <laughs> she was she was just a very modern woman, a broken modern woman who had gone to this monastery to kind of reclaim a girl she'd grown up with in an orphanage because mm. there was the intimations that they had a relationship and oh, yeah, she wanted to have her back that. kind of thing and just the way she acted, everybody was thinking, "Oh, this is evil! You're possessed!" And they literally like chain her to a cross and try to exorcise her. And it was it was heavy. Then the attack was a gorgeous film. And then I saw The Hunt mm-hmm. with uh, with Mads Mikkelsen. And I hope I said that right because nobody knows how to say his name. It's right over here. <laughs> <laughs> and it was We have to get amazing. through her name still. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was an amazing <laughs> film. It completely blew me away. And he won the uh, Cannes actor, Best Actor Prize mm-hmm. for that in, in 2012. It was amazing. Just the way an entire town turns on him because of a of an accusation from a little girl. Just, whoa. Which, of course, leads nicely into our guest because Mitch Mickelson is on Hannibal the series, which I have seen the first and two no episodes. And no one's turned before. against him. <laughs> How did that happen? Well, it's okay to eat people. <laughs> he, he fries up a good lung. 
I saw that last night, so that was all right. But we are joined by I'm gonna I'm gonna make the stab at it. Okay, try, try, try. Larjean Korostecki. Perfect. Nice. Oh, perfect. Oh, that oh, was I amazing. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> that was perfect. I practiced all day. <laughs> and that's course. the show. <laughs> <laughs> Pronouncing names. Yes. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for Thanks finding for the time. Me. Yeah. And it, it, it's it's mess. Is it? The D is silent. Oh. oh. I would never have known that if you hadn't I that. would never have known that if I didn't yeah. know him. That's, yeah. He's It's somehow fantastic. more manly like that. Mass. I like it, yeah. yeah. Sexy. It is. I don't, yeah. I don't know. It's hot. Mass. Mass. Yeah. 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 But he's awesome. He's fantastic. He's yeah, great. It's going to be. Yeah. He's unnerving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. But yeah, welcome to the show. Thanks. If you've seen any of our show, we kind of know how we start, mm -hmm. and uh, we, we want to know what your favorite movie is. Oh, my favorite movie, this just goes down to my heartstrings, oh. is Zeffirelli's Romeo and Juliet. Oh, oh nice. Oh, I fell in love with Olivia Hussey in that movie. Yeah, because she's beautiful. Yeah, who yeah. Because <laughs> she's gorgeous. That was my first introduction to like a bodice and a corset. I'm like, so that's what those do. <laughs> I yeah. approve. <laughs> yeah, I just yeah, she was stunning in that film. Yeah, and it's it's got you know it, it's got some dated quality to it certainly now, but there's something so charming about it, and and something that because I watched it when I was so young and I've seen it over the years, it just always tugs at my heartstrings mm -hmm. in the right way, and I, I think Seth Riley just did such a beautiful job with the text and, and the way it was cut and everything. So oh, I, yeah. I love that. It really was sort of a piece of art in, yeah. in many different ways. Yeah. In terms of, yeah, just, like, just the way it was cut, yeah. the way it was well, lit, the way it was And it was everything. the first time they'd actually cast younger actors. Yeah, I was just so excited. Yeah. What was the, the thing that she couldn't go to? She technically oh. couldn't go to her screening. She did go to the screening, but because she was underage, because she had shown her breasts, and she was still only 16 or 17 or whatever it was, so she yeah. was under the age of 18, which you had to be to yeah, actually yeah, see the R-rated film. Yeah. <laughs> at that time, I think it was R-rated or something at that time. Uh, so, yeah, how lovely to see. And, of course, yeah. they've done it since. Yeah. I don't think Claire was that old when she did it. I don't think she was. It was just after yeah. My So-Called Life, I think. Yeah, yeah. so... She wasn't yeah. 16, but she no, was... No, 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 no. She but was not. Somewhere around there. Yeah. 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 Good choice. Thank you. Good on you. I was hoping you'd pick Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> <laughs> Which also, also is an amazing film. Yeah. 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 And also is kind of a piece of artwork in oh, totally. itself, too. Yeah. Totally. It's one of those ones that every time I watch it, I'm like, oh yeah, this is really good. Yeah. Yeah. The cinematography yeah. in that film is, yeah. is, is stark and amazing. And I love every cool. and every every time they do a shot of like Jody alone in a room with men. Oh. <laughs> They're all like really tall, she's little Jody, and then... <laughs> It just like well, it sort of makes her stand out okay. because like yeah. in so many, she's the only woman. Yeah. She's like littler than everybody else. She's well, like the only rookie. <laughs> she's not even like a full agent yet. I think it's part of the part of the whole story too. Yeah, that whole aspect oh, yeah. of it that is just shown so yeah. well. Yeah, it's such a good film. Yeah, I agree. It's true. But I you should have picked it. No way. <laughs> you know, Julia is awesome. Bring some class to the joint. It's good. <laughs> just leave it to me to drag it down. <laughs> Damn it! I told you. <laughs> None of these Hannibal jokes. It's, it won't <laughs> play. It won't play. But you, uh, you were like the youngest uh, actress to get into. I even wrote it down like conservatory. In, yeah, in, in, it's yeah. now the Birmingham Conservatory yeah. for classical theater training. I think because yeah. the Birminghams um, yeah. are an amazing family who donated some money some years ago. Um, yeah, that was. I'm not going to say how long ago, but that was a while ago now. I was, I was 17, I'll say that. Oh, so that uh, wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Then. We'll say it wasn't that long ago. It wasn't. <laughs> no, it wasn't that long ago. But I, yeah, I was 17. Wow. And uh, I was an apprentice at Stratford um, when I was 17. I left high school, and I did finish high school. I always say that when I talk to kids. I finished it. I just finished it unconventionally. Um, but yeah, I, I w came right out of high school, was an apprentice there, and then wow. Richard Manette, who was the artistic director there at the time, encouraged me to audition for the conservatory. And I said to him, uh, in your mandate for the conservatory, it says that you have to have had, there was something like at that time, five years of professional experience or a degree at theater school. Wow. I think that was kind of the trade-off. <laughs> and I said, I have neither of those. <laughs> And he said, oh, don't worry about it, I'll just come and audition, and, and it was lovely, and they had a nice place for me. And I, it was wow. like, it was like my theater school, in fact, 
because all the people there were NTS graduates and, and um, Ryerson graduates and uh, all over and Ooh. and then little old me. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. That's I can learn from everybody. Yeah. <laughs> How exciting right? though. It was so exciting to be at that age and, and be able to look at not just the, the people that you would look at, the, the mentors like the late Peter Donaldson was a great mentor of mine and Tom McCamus and, and uh, Stephen Wimet and Richard Manette of course, as I mentioned, and Martha Henry, but not only those people that you, of course, would look to, but even being so young to look at, like, Michael Terrio was a great mm -hmm. mentor at that time, too, and, and mm -hmm. even my fellow apprentices who were just that, you know, the six or so years older than me, and oh, yeah. <laughs> actually in their 20s, and <laughs> it, was, it was great, it was, uh, it was a lovely been, place yeah. to be. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Stunning. <laughs> I was thinking. I was thinking of it today, and I'm like, I could totally pull out the credit on this one, um, and I'm gonna do it. Do I it. Apologize to everybody, but that makes you like the Captain Kirk of that conservatory because Kirk was like the youngest captain ever. Yes. And that's really like Captain, captain Kirk. Kirk. You are that cool. The conservatory. Yeah. I like that. That could be on a T-shirt somewhere. Captain Kirk. Captain Kirk. Conservatory. I'll take it. Do it. I'll take it. Take yeah. that cred. Cause that's yeah, and then. Because you're not the Wesley Crusher of the Conservatory. No! I would not. That would all that would all be, be good. I, I, I do have a soft spot for Wesley Crusher, but I don't want to be the Wesley Crusher. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I have a soft spot for all Next Generation anything. Oh, I love Next Gen. I'm pulling out my geekness here, too. Can't you can't get behind Wesley. No. <sighs> Maybe Is it a it's jealousy because... thing? No. It was you those pantsuits. Those were bad. <laughs> <laughs> you were so attractive. Although he was, he was super cute and... When I was watching Next Generation, it was like every day after school, 4 o'clock, my brother and I would watch, and this was when I was in grade school. So he was the cute, you know, for a little, sure. little girl who's like 10 to 13. He's cute. All right. Yep. That's my defense of what's It's, it's a fair defense. I'm just saying, I was just like, dude, just <laughs> shut up. You can't save the ship every week. <laughs> it was jealousy. Let the card do his job. He's totally. cool. So, no way. Picard was the man. I met Patrick Stewart. Did you? We had our picture taken with him at, at Comic-Con. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, well, we met him too for like a second. <laughs> yeah, he, get, he kind of positioned us, and he's got that English accent, and you know, he's just awesome. Uh, he's so, I saw him do Mackers <gasps> in London, and um, that, wasn't, that was the second time. The first time I met him, I, I'm totally a geek, so both times <laughs> I met him was backstage. And the first time I met him, he was doing a show with Joshua Jackson hmm. um, in the West End as well. And I was over there, and I went to see the show, and I was traveling by myself, as I do, and, and, and uh, went to see this show, and oh, what was it called? Life in the Theater. Okay. Okay. And then I went backstage afterwards, and there was this swarm <laughs> of girls, all about really my age, right. because I grew up with Dawson's Creek, too. So crazy to see Joshua Jackson. They were insane. And I happened because I knew where the stage door was. I got there kind of immediately. And Joshua Jackson comes out. And I was kind of trying to stand to the side. I don't I don't know him. Um, and I was there to see Patrick Stewart, although I'd love, to, I'd love to get to know Joshua Jackson, of course. But And I, I kind of tried to stay to the side. And, and uh, he saw me immediately and grabbed my, um, my program that I was holding in my hand and signed it quickly and then walked away. And none of the other girls got a no. signature. And then everybody <laughs> trailed off. And then I was there with... I three or four women in their 40s. <laughs> and we were there for Patrick Stewart. Patrick Stewart. Stewart. <laughs> yeah. And then he came out and we had a nice chat about Stratford, actually. Um, anyway, that was that's my Patrick Stewart That's story. a good story. <laughs> Joshua Jackson thought I was there to see him, but yeah. I was there to see Surprise, him. Surprise, Josh. <laughs> How's that working out on Fringe for you now? <laughs> but yeah, ours, I think as soon as we left our photo op with him, the first thing I think I said to Sue was that I'm taller than Patrick Stewart. I was just like, that is so cool. Because he's just, he's very imposing. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's yeah. his presence. His presence <laughs> he dwarfs anyone. Yeah. 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 I could watch that man do almost anything. He's yeah, fantastic. he's pretty talented. Yeah. He's got some skills. You know, sir, Bring whatever. Bring the phone whatever, boy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> sir, whatever. <laughs> but, you know, you, uh, you're no, you're no slouch. No, I'm not you're, slouch. You're everywhere, man. You've got, like, recurring rows on the listener. Mm hmm So that means, That was you know, season one. Yeah, with our good friend Lauren Lee Smith. I, uh, no. No, she wasn't there. Really. She, she wasn't was there. Oh, that's right. You need and to go I, back. On, uh, so my role on The Listener 2, I was, I was actually, this is so weird, I played Craig's mom. Yeah, I, know, I was I gonna, saw that. Weird. <laughs> so I existed kind of in my own little bubble. 
on that show on season one and this backstory that they they never ended up continuing after season one. But uh, I kn I didn't really meet a lot of them. I met Craig, of course, but I didn't yeah. really meet um, many of the other ones. That was a fun. That was fun though. That's no, bring it back. It's <laughs> bring back. Bring back, back the, the twenty some odd year old yeah. mom. <laughs> bring her back. I, once they actually did bring me back in present day and they had to age me to look semi forty, I guess. I resent that. Yeah, it was I'm semi forty. <laughs> semi forty. <laughs> it was really so I mean like twenty? <laughs> <laughs> well it was interesting because this is now this is like four years ago, so Yeah. Four years ago, I was looking younger than now too, and and to then age me to forty, it was it was interesting. It was That'd fun. be cool. Yeah, it was yeah. fun. And then you just did. Did uh, you stare at yourself and go like so? A little bit. I started doing pictures, yeah. and I was like, "This is I look like my mom." Wow. <laughs> totally look like my mom. Okay. Yeah, just that little bit, and also I, I wore this uh, sweater vest, and I thought, yeah, that's what forty-year-olds wear. <laughs> I, mean, I don't even own a sweater vest. That's what my mother wears. <laughs> You do not have seen it. <laughs> but then you've also a long you did. Time ago, <laughs> you've had three episodes on Copper. Yeah, yeah. I'm shooting uh, season two right now. Ooh. I've shot one episode of season two, and All I'm shooting right. another episode next week. And yeah, it's a, that's a great, great show and a great crew. I love visiting that set. The, the set is. Um, as if you've seen the show, just mm -hmm. so outstanding, and, and yeah. The, yeah. the scale of the set is incredible, and and they've got such a nice group there. It's a really nice group, and Dylan Taylor, who's uh, yeah. who plays, I, I should say I play his wife, or he plays my hubby, whichever <laughs> way you want to look at it, uh, is lovely, and it's a lot of fun. I get to come in and put on an Irish accent, That's and right. That's a little spitfire. Oh no, I can't. Come on, you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. Oh, that's more scotch, isn't it? I was going to say, that's a little scotch. All right, let me find it. I'll find it. Think Keebler Elf. No, we'll go with the commitments. That's fucking deadly, that. There you that's go. That's it. It'd be brilliant. Let's do that. No, brilliant, I still think is going towards Scottish. Oh, fuck off. You didn't know. <laughs> See, now I'm going Scottish again. You didn't know what you're saying. Yeah. I'm very proud of this. Apparently, just to go Irish, you just need to swear a lot. You do. It's, it's true. It's full of every other word. When I when I lived in Ireland, it was like every every other word. Sometimes you had to get used to them. Just mm -hmm. saying. And it's just natural. It just happens. Fuck yeah. fuck blah, blah, blah. It just keeps going. And it's not and it's not actually swearing. It's yeah, it's just it's just, literally just point of yeah. Yeah. That's how I talk to the cats. <laughs> See how I brought it back around. <laughs> yeah, you did. Right. right. Uh, <laughs> cats. See what happens here. <laughs> Jack, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> That's, uh, but then you were you were on Dan for Mayor. Dan for Mayor. Yeah, yeah, that was my first kind of um, strong, bigger role, mm -hmm. and that was just after the listener. That one happened. Uh, she was great. It was fun. It was that the uh, the guys who ran that are the same guys who did Corner Gas. I know. I great, love like, Corner Gas. Yeah. Just really. Yeah. Good PG humor. Yeah, which you get for really yeah. awesome PG humor. Yeah. And um, she was a lot of fun to play. She was yeah, feisty in her own way, too. I tend to play feisty characters. Uh, what? Sarcastic. <laughs> I, I, I see no correlation intense. there at all. <laughs> <laughs> no. I think you're trying to tell me something. Uh, no, she was a great. That was a lot of fun. And, and uh, also, I've been so blessed on the shows I've been kind of recurring mm -hmm. or a series regular on because they've all been uh, the nicest casts. Well, it's Canada. I know. Well, no, but not just Canada. I mean, when I was overseas doing Camelot, mm. that was also... There you go. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're doing Camelot also. That was... I, I like to think of Camelot as it had the most... It felt like a theater show. Oh, wow. It felt so family-like that the whole cast, it felt like we were in rep theater or something. It was so similar to how kind of the family feel I felt when I was at Stratford or that you would feel when you're kind of just immersed in any show for that period of time. Yeah. It was great. Wow. It was such a, yeah, that was a really, so that cast was amazing. Dan Vermeer was amazing. Hannibal's the nicest people. So I just feel like I'm so blessed. Yeah, totally. <laughs> with the people that I've gotten to work with. But since you, since you brought up Stratford and theater again, yeah, which is awesome. Yeah, let's go there. Do you have a favorite monologue? Oh yeah, I I, I, don't need you to I, do I it. started with, I started with um, <laughs> started with talking about Romeo and Juliet, and, and I can't get by Juliet. Okay. I mean that's uh, 
Gallop Pace is is what I started with when I um, was first auditioning, mm -hmm. and and I've pulled it out a few times, and uh, it's it's just her words are her thoughts are so present, and yeah. her her words are immediate, and everything about her is so beautifully crafted. A lot of his characters are beautifully crafted, but some of those speeches are just mm -hmm. incredible. And and Gallup Pace is such a great, like hormonal, amazing exploration of of the the fourteen year old without or thirteen year old without being um, without being wishy washy as sometimes you say you see Juliet yeah. played, you know, in that kind of she's oh Romeo, Romeo kind yeah. of wishy washy way. Yeah. And Gallup Pace really encompasses that feisty, fiery, trying to work out the hormones, what is it like to fall in love for the first time, oh my goodness, how do I control <laughs> these feelings, what are these feelings? So there you go. Yeah, I think I'm going to throw up. <laughs> yeah, it, totally, totally, and, and she gets so frustrated, and, and yeah. it runs the gamut, there's there's so many great speeches for her, but that one in particular, I have a, I have a lot of fun this for. Do you do that at home with cats? <laughs> I do, I totally sit them down. <laughs> Say okay, you're my audience today. <laughs> this this one work. to Harvey, yeah. this one to Roxy. <laughs> Roxy's my little friend there. My cat Flynn would be perfect for that. She would just sit and stare. <laughs> <laughs> sit and stare. Go. What are you doing, Mom? <laughs> you look crazy. You don't understand it, but I want you to love me. So yeah. I'll wait. That's really your thrill, you guys. <laughs> but you also did, of course, the perfect Canadian staple. Well, you did an episode of Degrassi. I did do an episode of Degrassi. Yeah, you, you know what? I can tell a, a, a nice little thing about my episode of Degrassi All right. because it was when um, it was kind of before I did. So about four and a half years ago, I devoted myself to kind of film and TV, and mm -hmm. I've done four theater shows since. But um, I haven't sadly stepped on a stage in two years. And right. to anyone who's listening, I really want to. Um, <laughs> I really, it actually. Paul I, Amos. <laughs> I would really like to. <laughs> I, I was actually going to maybe do a theater show this summer, and then and then scheduling just didn't work out. So it's it's not completely off the table. But uh, I devoted. But before that, Degrassi was in the time where I was in between Stratford seasons and and was just starting to audition for film and TV. And I so I did. I think I had like three lines or something. <laughs> and in the end, the three lines got cut, and all you saw of me was in that episode I was playing Lauren Collins' uh, roommate okay. um, at the time, and all you ended up seeing of me was me standing in a hallway. There was no, <laughs> like, no. three lines where I, I think I, I was like, hey, you need to do your laundry more often or our room is a mess or something like that. I don't remember. <laughs> and then I sat there ready, like watching to see this moment of Degrassi, and it was gone. Yeah. And then I was like, wait, that's me in the skirt. <laughs> Where's my... Oh, so oh, you go from being the angry roommate to like just a loiterer in the hallway. Yeah. <laughs> but that's when I learned they still had to pay me for my angry roommate oh, moment. Nice. Oh, okay. Some small consolation. Totally. But yeah, I was totally excited to be on Degrassi. And mm -hmm. then... Well, you're still there. You got further than I did. <laughs> what did you do? So far. <laughs> I'm going to tell a story and I'm not going to mention any names. Mm -hmm. because people will hunt him down and hurt him. But a friend of mine used to go around telling the story that he was on Degrassi. Because <laughs> people say, you know, this is he awesome. looks like one of the characters. <laughs> and I'm not going to mention any names. <laughs> <laughs> You've met him. Um, <laughs> so he would just, he would be like, yeah, that's well, me. Well, pe people would ask, like, you know, where did you grow up and stuff? And he would kind of throw out Toronto. I said, "Yeah, and I used to, you know, I was on Degrassi for a while." <laughs> and how? Are, and that was before you know YouTube and DVDs, mm -hmm. where you know the entire series is out there now. Nobody could go back and check an episode because you couldn't do that. Couldn't yeah. do that. Yeah. 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 So he would. He had people fooled left right. And I, he, to clarify, he didn't say he had a big part or anything. He was just. <laughs> he just saw yeah, Degrassi. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I was in the classroom. You know for the entire season for this and you know I got to sit next to Caitlin and like well that's too bad because I got to hug Caitlin but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's I might tell you who it is afterwards but uh, All right. but yeah nobody else <laughs> out there will know <laughs> I can't get away with that I have to if people say you were on Degrassi I go you gotta back that up they could actually look it up and yep. then they go where are you it's yep. like, I'm skirt. Skirt. That's <laughs> <right there. laughs> I mean, you've also you did uh, you did antiviral. I did. Which yeah. Brandon's great. That 
gosh, that, uh, that film. That was <laughs> a hell of a debut. <laughs> uh, yeah, a hell of a film. Mm-hmm. Hey? The look of it, everything. I mean, to talk about cinematography, yeah. Jacob Reem's work on it is, is fantastic. And the look of that entire thing and, and Caleb's work yeah. and the lead um, is, is so good. I sat there going, I'm so disturbed and, and wonderful. I even so. watched, I watched the trailer for the first time and felt like I was going to catch something. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like I was, it felt dirty to be watching. It's a great It felt unsanitary. Film. So and not the good dirty then? No. No, okay. I just no, want to clarify. No, it didn't feel very sexy. Not no. sexy. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was, uh, I was so pleased to, I hope to work with him again, and I was mm-hmm. so pleased to be a part of his first um, first film. It was uh, really exciting for him, and I think he is going to be a formidable filmmaker That's in his wicked. own right. I think he's really, yeah, it's, it's a hell of a deba- uh, debut, and I think he's just yeah. going mm-hmm. to get there. It was a brilliant him. idea, too. I was like, oh, I yeah. can't believe no one's done this before, well, and it's disgusting. It from a and, film yeah. and expanded, yeah. And I'm like, hey, it just doesn't seem like it's that far away. Like people can be it's that crazy for celebrity. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's that's uh, that's why it's so good because mm-hmm. you watch it and think, oh my goodness, <laughs> I want to catch Justin Bieber's cold. Kind of like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then <laughs> I can't remember what the festival was. It was that one that we didn't have to go to because we saw practically everything. Canadian. That's right. Yeah, mm-hmm. something like that. Because you had uh, have please, Mister Know It All. Mm-hmm. Yes. Or please yes. kill Mister Know It All. Please kill Mister Know It All. Which was the one we missed because I think we were in the studio that night. It was the Shame. only one. We I know. I felt really bad. There's so many good Canadians in it too. Well, there's a lot of good Canadians. I know. We watched. I think I might still have a screener somewhere at home for it, maybe. So, ah, you yeah. should take a look. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you're just, you're everywhere right now. Yeah, it's good. Wicked. It's good. And then of course Hannibal. Hannibal, I know Hannibal. 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 <laughs> Which is just taking off. Yeah. And I, I I admitted on the way in that I've only seen the first two episodes because you know I was away and let's face it between Sue and I Sue watches way more television than I do but between the two of us we watch a lot of television. But Hannibal has now been added to my roster just from the two episodes I watched last night. Yeah. Because one I knew I wanted to watch it because Mads Mikkelsen. Is amazing. And Lawrence Fishburne all, had me right off the bat. I'm like, yes, Lawrence Fishburne, I'm sure. Hugh is awesome. Hugh is so good, isn't he? Yeah, and then and then I was like, hey, it's Lawrence G. Where did you I'm like, I was sold. So, and it's Done. so good. It's so good. I mean, it is smart television. Yeah. 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 And I mean, it's disturbing television. Yeah. yeah. It's shot gorgeous. Is it? I just, uh, my... My roommate, um, our roommate, was saying to us the other day, she was like, every time you walk into the room and watch it, you feel like you're watching a film. Like, mm-hmm. you walk by and be like, hey, what movie is yeah, that? Yeah, it looks yeah. cinematic. Because it's so yeah. cinematic. Yeah. Um, Jim, we were saying earlier today, Jim, she went and had me. Come on, nominate him. Because it's so good. Yeah, it yeah. His yeah. work is just outstanding. Um, yeah, the, the look of it is incredible. Yeah, and, uh, and then... Well, I had read the book. And it really it puts you out. like inside Will's head yeah. Without, yeah. without taking Will yeah. off the screen. Yeah. Like you see everything from his point of view, but while watching him at the same yeah, time. Yeah, the fantastical cool. elements that you get there are. Yeah. Um, I was saying to Tim, I like the, the wiper motion the where he, like, yeah. yeah, when he like yeah. clears the, <laughs> the crime yeah. scene to and go then goes back into it. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, we were talking about it, I think, this afternoon. Because, you know, I'd grown up reading the books, like Thomas Harris's books. And then, of course, seeing the original Silence of the Lambs. And then when I'd heard Lawrence was cast as Jack Crawford, I'm mm-hmm. like, but how do you top Scott Glenn? I mean, Scott Glenn is the, he's the man. He is pretty good. And I told Sue, I said, the part where Lawrence had me sold was where uh, they're in the bathroom, like, in the yeah. one talking, and the guy comes and goes, so use the ladies' room! I'm like, that's totally Jack Crawford. That's perfect. Go ahead. <laughs> You know that that extra. Um, I'm I'm okay to tell this story. That extra did didn't know that was gonna happen. No. Amazing. So watch the scene again and look at the extra's reaction. And they just told him you're gonna walk in and then you're gonna leave. <laughs> so walk in to use the washroom and and then get the wrath of Lawrence Fishburne was what you weren't told. You're gonna walk so in. So Peter Pan. The reaction is totally <laughs> authentic. Of this totally you're watching that. Going, oh my god. <laughs> I just got yelled at. I was thinking, oh, he probably this 
poor background, and I was going, oh, was that okay? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Everyone applauded him, though. He was, he was so fantastic. He was reaction. Yeah. And then, of course, the second episode was the one I got to see last night, right, mm-hmm. right, literally right before I went to bed. Ooh, that's a uh, good thing, because you didn't have to eat mushrooms then. I'm not a mushroom guy anyway, so it's mm. okay. <laughs> but I also saw the introduction of your character, Freddy. And, and you read the books, so... Yeah. But it's been and literally mushrooms. decades since I've read them. But uh, I was talking with Sue today, is that... I like Freddy as the character. <laughs> I don't trust but, Freddy. Yeah, yeah, I don't trust <laughs> Freddy and her ethic. I mean, I'm like, I love the fact that you can weed up all this information because, you know, well, we're not journalists by any stretch of the imagination, but we get the idea of asking questions to get your answers and your yeah. information. But I'm like... Where, where are your ethics? <laughs> I was like, this is so awesome. Well, the thing awesome. is, because sometimes she moves the investigation forward. Like, the whole yeah. story moves on what she does or what she finds out. Yeah, I think Brian's utilized Brian Fuller. Oh, who's, who's let's our, get that yeah. our show winner. Brian Falls. Fuller. Brian Falls was so good, Brian. Come back. Come on our show. Oh, please. Time. Please. Bring Carolyn with you, and we'll talk. Oh, yeah. Carolyn. Carolyn. Yeah. Carolyn's yeah, fantastic. She's, yeah. uh, Wonder Falls are dead like me. Oh, I know God, that they're yeah. trying to do, like, a campaign, yeah. too. Get some dead like me action happening again. Well, Veronica He's, Mars is like <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah. Mars for everybody to come so back. well, mm-hmm. and I think Brian hopefully, hopefully will kind of spin off that um, craze. And as as well, he should. His imagination is insane, it's, yeah, right? It's insane. He, his name was what sold me first when I heard on oh, any cool news that Hannibal was being done. I'm like, what? what you, why is this a TV show? And then yeah. I'm like, oh, Brian Fuller. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna give you the shot for sure. Yeah. And then you yeah. hear, then Mass gets attached, yeah. and Lawrence gets attached, and you get attached, and you go, "Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> we can, we can give this." I think it's all right. Yeah. And it's shot in Canada, so all right, fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's got, it's got a bunch of connects. Yeah. Good yeah. times. But yeah, it's just. Oh. Yeah, he's. It was. So, it's so exciting to to read his his imagination is wild, and and to I mean, all the writers on the show uh, are fantastic and and to get a script is always so exciting every time you would get a new script you go oh, I'm so excited <laughs> to read this and perhaps going to be disturbed by the end oh, of the yeah. night oh yeah. yeah the visuals alone that oh, the, are just ridiculous are, yeah just amazing mm-hmm. you just I'm just gonna gush. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. But it is. But it's, yeah, it's not a it's lot. So good. And it's um, we were some of the cast were emailing back and forth the other day, and, and Scott Thompson was sending an email, and and I don't think he'll be mad at me for saying this. He said, uh, he said it's embarrassing how much I like watching our show. <laughs> said, yeah, I kind of feel the same. It's embarrassing how much how much I, oh, I enjoy yeah. watching the show. But- it's amazing. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. And it's crazy. He's very un Scott Thompson y. Yeah. Yeah, isn't yeah. he? Isn't yeah. he? It's it a really great. cool to turn for him. Yeah. To see him, yeah. yeah. And he's, uh, you'll see, you know, he gets his comic moments in, the, as we call them, the Geek Squad, the three of them. They're <laughs> so nice. There's, but there's comic moments, I think, throughout the whole thing. I find Lawrence hysterical. Oh my at God. Times. Yes. Oh, yeah. Hysterical at times. Yeah. And but you don't want to be on the bit, Ron's Especially when he's oh. annoyed or like. I don't know. Like it's he's great. so sarcastic sometimes. He dr- delivers it so dryly. I'm just like, Did you I see love episode you. three. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So in episode three, when they're in his office, and yes. he, he's talking about um, about he's asking for psychiatrist opinions, and he ends up going with one that essentially he's like that you that serves my best interest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the, the way he delivers all that, oh, it's just he's, he's so funny and and perfect for that part at the same time that ambiguous morality that even exists in Jack Crawford mm-hmm. yeah uh, I love yeah. yeah that it's not he's not this head of the, the well even because I mean the, it's really not good for Will what he's doing and yet no. at the same time who's there pushing him every step because of the way because he can use him yeah mm-hmm. absolutely and that's uh, there, I think there's moral ambiguity in so many of our characters uh, and it's what makes the show so mm-hmm. interesting oh yeah even with episode three, has introduced Abigail now, and there, there's yeah. there's not necessarily moral ambiguity, but just this ambiguity around who she is and kind of what her, where does she fit? What is she yeah. thinking? Mm-hmm. I just think it's so well written, awesome, and so much fun. And to then there's play. this Hannibal Lecter guy. <laughs> <laughs> What's he doing? He's charming and smart. He's eating people. Yeah. And understated and lovely. Right? And, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I love, yeah, I love playing with that team. I love coming in and, and uh, stirring up trouble and, <laughs> and 
Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's to be seen where, if and when Freddie will find her moral center. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I spent half of each episode wondering if you're going to die because <laughs> every time I'm like, you are walking a dangerous <laughs> line. <laughs> you don't really, even know. Yeah, she really inundates herself into that, into all these scenarios in a way. Yeah. I, I think, though, at the end of the day, speaking of Jack's character, like, I, I think they know ultimately the media can help you yes even yeah. if it's tabloid media yeah. and so i think there's some and it's like keep your friends up. close keep your enemies yeah. closer like i think they i think she's another tool basically and i, I not a tool no no no, no, no. <laughs> she is actually a tool. she's kind of a tool and a tool uh but yeah that there's there's that whole thing of okay we're playing that we're playing the game here mm-hmm. when he breaks into the hotel and sits her down and yeah and threatens her and she kind of threatens him right back to say, you know, essentially it's like, are you really going to arrest me? Are we really yeah. going to have this conversation? Because there's obviously this history. When I when I first read that scene and Lawrence and I sat down and we're discussing it, it was so great the way Brian's written it because it's obvious that there's history between yeah. them. Mm-hmm. It's not just that Jack Crawford's She's not the first really. time and like, <laughs> To Freddie Lowndes, title crime, I just discovered who you are. <laughs> you are not good and evil and we're gonna we're gonna get rid of you instantly. It's he comes in and she instantly says to him, Hey Jack, essentially. Like yeah. she knows exactly who he is. Yeah. They, they yeah. Have it. And he's like, Of course you're here. And he's like, <laughs> Oh man, you're doing it again. You've stepped and to me it felt like a, you have stepped over the line a little too much this time, young lady. And she's going, Check yourself okay. before yeah, you wreck yourself. yourself. <laughs> Watch it. <laughs> Watch yourself. Wow. But it's, a, yeah. it's yeah, yeah, and it's kind of amazing in some ways how much she can get away with. And in, yeah. in the other sense, you go, well, one, it's TV, and two, come on, people get away with a lot in the yeah. media these days. Yeah. Um, so she's so. It's much kind of like an today. understanding that uh, they can't really stop her. Like she's going to get her nose in where she's going to get her nose in. Yeah, I mean he's right to say, of course, if we want to talk legalistically, if someone uh, mm. tampers with a crime scene, yes, right. you can be arrested. But but she's simply, also smart enough to know that because she's been. Yeah, simply so talking to a talking to a victim in her psychiatrist mm. in the ward. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean I don't get the feeling. You look at my costumes. I'm not incognito. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. So she's not she's not impersonating anyone or anything like that. Like, well, I well, said that to Tim actually. Like, with it, every time you're on screen, I can't take my mm-hmm. eyes off you. I'm like, the, there's just something so incredible. magnetic yeah. about her that you, yeah. Yeah. you have to pay attention to her. She doesn't just like hide in the corner no. or anything. It's she's been standing it's on been the a, amazing. Also, the I know the feedback online is in, incredible because it's like so people def- uh, like rallying to her defense and then people just wanting her to die <laughs> and finding like ah oh, she's so obnoxious she said that and then oh my goodness but you're so anti-feminist to say that and just, you know, these, awesome. these great debates and people who've been talking to me about it are even debates and that's so exciting um i think for brian to to have tapped into mm-hmm. tom harris's character in this way to create uh, a female version of freddie that is Causing conversation. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah let's that's a good time. Especially because it's not like yeah. the, yeah. the show's not full of women either. either. Yeah. And Unless they're laying on the ground under mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> For example. <laughs> that was, we were, yeah, because we were talking about that. Just the imagery on that that set was it just because because as i've said that's all i've seen so far is the first and second episode but that set with the hands coming out of the ground and the mushrooms and i'm like yeah you like, can't get away with that like even five years ago you couldn't get the more you learn about it. what's going on and yeah. why like the more disturbing it gets it does like, really it's just so keeping them good. in a coma so yeah. they don't know they're yeah. dying i love it it's Disturbing. I don't know what that says about me, but because <laughs> it, it's tickling that little dark inner, oh yeah, inner demon inside. Yeah. Of just going, this is, and it's engaging. Though. I mean, it's not like you can, it's not like you're sitting there feeling bad that you're enjoying watching these people who have died and blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. It's engaging because like there's stuff with Freddie because you're worried about the ethics and you're worried about. Yeah. You know, how far is well being pushed? Yeah, and all of it That's is just, just, it's just, and none of it's for the sake yeah. of like everything's got a point. Yes, and it's not even exploitive. from the the killer's point of view, there's a reason why he's doing what mm-hmm. he's doing, and mm-hmm. and that's yeah. the whole thing for Will is to find out why. Yeah. Yeah, I think they were saying once it's not 
the show is not violence for the sake of violence. No, no at all. There's always some sort of psychological aspect of whether it's sociopathy or psychopathy or whatever we're uh, getting into or morals or whatever mm -hmm. it is. There's always something that is driving that storytelling. So I think yeah. I think yeah. why I think why it's so good and intelligent and fantastic is because it's good storytelling. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day we're exploring aspects of, of the human psyche that are that are interesting and, and uh, even there's a, a quick scene I think in episode three where Lecter's talking with his patient and the guy mm -hmm. like blows his nose and then Franklin yeah drops the he drop <laughs> you haven't seen it yet but it's not I'll spoilery it he it's like fine. blows his nose and drops the napkin or the Kleenex on the the like nice clean glass table next to him and it just cuts to Lecter like. <laughs> you are dead. It's also the I almost want to kill you myself. That's disgusting. <laughs> the brilliance of Mass in that oh. moment is being able. He's perfectly still and yet so, so subtle, much. and you see this slight turn in his face, and you go, "Uh oh!" <laughs> it's like an instant. You just know what's going on in his head, or that's something mm -hmm. I loved when. I first got to that scene between Freddie and, and uh, Hannibal, where I first come in and, and he asks for my bag, and I remember this. Oh, scene. yeah. You just have this magnetic feeling of, I don't know, yeah, I better do what you say. I don't know why I should do yeah. what you say, but I should. <laughs> You're just sort of hypnotic. <laughs> You're just, and, and that's that's totally Mass's interpretation of that part in his also a bit of him just being hypnotic in everything he does. That's <laughs> yeah. what saying with the hunt. It was, I mean, whoa. he's... he's whoa. Did you see it, the hunt? He's amazing. Oh my god. It just, <sighs> yeah. I mean, it's still... Like, the whole thing shocked me, because the little girl, Clara, is amazing. She's adorable. And then, because I knew what I knew what was going you had to, to happen. Like, skip the next movie, I think, didn't you? You had yeah, to yeah. I, I couldn't you watch the go. next movie after that because I, I went home. So I was just so free. I was like, holy crap! Yeah. But yeah, the whole scene where he's playing with the guys in in the pillow room there, and he's playing dead, and then he kind of pretends to wake up, and then Clara just throws herself at him and kisses him. I'm like, whoa! <laughs> whoa. And it just yeah, it just. It yeah. just, and his entire performance was amazing. He's he's just, it's just yeah. He's wow. a, he's also one of the kindest kindest people you'll ever meet, which always makes me so happy. So you'll yeah. let him take your bag. Yeah, <laughs> you can do yeah, it. Yeah, okay. You can do it. Now, I know in standard television it's like five to six day shooting schedule per episode. Mm -hmm. No, did that? No, we no. were doing eight. eight? Yeah, okay. eight an episode. So, like, Which actually is pretty normal. Copper shoots eight eight days wow. an episode too. Now is that like eight straight days or? Yeah, we do. Uh, no, we did, we do. We didn't do block shooting. I get confused sometimes. Like, where did I block shoot? Where did I not block shoot? We did it's not. It's Tuesday. Shoot. Yes. <laughs> so thank you. What day is it? Uh, we didn't block shoot for um, Hannibal. So, so yeah, it was just eight. episode by episode. Yeah, episode okay. by episode. That's, and that's literally eight days straight and then a day off kind of thing. And yeah, and then, well, I mean, I mean, as you see, Freddie comes and goes, yeah. so yeah. I'm not, I'm able to kind of do other things at the same time, which is really nice. Now it's shot, I know it's shot in can is it shot right here in Toronto? Here in Toronto. Wow. In our backyard. Because I'm trying, I was so for season trying to find two. locations. <laughs> yeah. I will There's not some stuff reveal that needs to happen. Let's just make sure. Because <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. we want to make sure, you know, that gets picked up. Yeah, I really hope so. I have high hopes. Um, we've hopefully. heard other shows aren't being picked up. We're not mentioning any names. Bomb Girls. Uh, yeah. We were a little angry about save that. Bomb girls. Save Bomb Girls. Save, save the Bomb world. Girls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> save the Bomb Girls. Save the World. Yeah. Good Canadian TV. Save it was. It's, it is. It still is. So, I mean, I, I don't mind telling this story because we, we review like almost every episode. And my sister, who's an author, knows Michael McClendon. Mm hmm. And so he had emailed my sister when he found out that she and I were related. <laughs> and she passed on part of his email to her and said that, yeah, my, like our reviews had made him cry because we got mm -hmm. it. We got what they were trying to do. I'm like, yeah. Like, that means I just got to keep that level of writing up now. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got, what? I didn't know anyone was reading. <laughs> yeah. So we got like three episodes to go, me. yeah. Throwing it's, it onto the internet. Yeah. I didn't know. Yeah, that's it's, great. It's amazing the people you find out are actually reading your stuff. That's shocking. Yeah, it's crazy. So, which is why I'm not sure I will write about Hannibal because I don't need Maz to be reading. <laughs> <laughs> I'll write about it. I yeah, almost dear. did this week actually, mm -hmm. but then um, 
because I fell behind, so I'm started trying to do this like because I watch so much TV. I mm-hmm. want to talk. I want to highlight my favorite parts. Of Ask her how many shows she watches. How many shows? Thirty-five. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> They're not all on at the same time. Though, wow. You know, like um, like, like Survivor is going to end soon. Oh, for you're example. Survivor girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. and then I wasn't and then uh, one of my roommates watched it religiously and it was always on in the background. I was like, <laughs> I was like, forget it. I watch it. I watch it again. I love Cochrane. Yeah, <laughs> mm, Have you? Uh, are you into Orphan Black yet? Yes. Oh yeah. So good, right? Yeah. I was so lucky. It's that, more great uh, Canadian. That space. I know. This is, this is partially also why I bring it up yeah. because so many great Canadians are on it. It's so yeah. good. But yeah, Space yeah. sent me the first four episodes. So, so I literally got to see them all before I went on my trip, and I wrote up all my reviews beforehand. And Sue, of course, hadn't seen, and she didn't have time to borrow the desks. So I'm like, just please hurry up and see. I'm watching so much damn television. So good. And we were talking (laughs) about it on the way over because Tatiana is amazing. Someone hand Tatiana an Emmy, please. Yeah. Yeah, Hand her like six because (laughs) she (laughs) probably gets it. Yeah. Yeah, she's outstanding in it, isn't she? But we uh, we've got a mutual friend, of course. Who, who says uh, she loves you, <laughs> and to ask how you prepare for your roles. Is that mutual friend Katie Bowling? It, it is! Sure is. <laughs> Yay, Katie. Yay, Katie Bowling! Which, by the way, at her uh, book launch, she yes, was yeah. amazing. Yeah. Uh, I was so I was so honored uh, to be a part of that book launch. Her book is fantastic, yeah. and... and I was so pleased to be reading with her and Mark, and, and she's so, I can gush about Katie, she's so sweet, <laughs> she, she writes me this this message saying, hey, do you mind coming, like, do you think you could come to the lunch, and, and I would really love if you could read the narrator part, I know it's just the narrator, but really, trust me, it's a really important part, and then of course, it's a, it's a book reading, and, and I see the narrator part, and I was like, you've entrusted me with, like, the inner thoughts, yeah. this is, I, I felt... So honored to be. I know it's just the narrator. I know you have just the narrator. I'm doing all the talking, yeah. <laughs> and and very. I, I was I was somewhat nervous, in fact, because it's very important to honor her words and also honor what was going on as the scene was progressing between yeah. her and Mark, mm-hmm. of course. And, and ah, it was great. They did great. The whole setup was awesome. Yeah, it was so it was good. Such a lovely yeah. evening. A nice little Canadian feel <laughs> awesomeness of yes. our great community that we have here too in Toronto. So it was a lovely thing to be a part of. Um, How do you what were we right? <laughs> <laughs> like, what was the question? I'll talk about Katie. <laughs> How do I prepare for a role? Depends on the role, Katie Boland. <laughs> um, uh, it it depends. Uh, if I'm doing theater. Really, actually, theater and film is it's almost the same, really. I do a heck of a lot of, especially in theater, I have mm-hmm. a lot of text work. Um, I'll go through a script, and, and this is just from, from Stratford days and, and uh, the people who mentored me picking this kind of stuff up. But uh, if it's a Shakespeare in particular, I'll go through it and, and go through. I have this thing called the eight questions that David Latham gave me, eight questions about a character. And mm-hmm. what do others say about you? What do you say about yourself? It's this, this stuff within the script that you can glean to try to create a character. Uh, and that's certainly how I'd approach a role in theater because you've got the whole trajectory of the role in front of you, yeah. of what you're portraying. Um, and film is a little different because you don't have that. I mean, even now, you know, you look at if we get a second season, uh, which we will. Uh, <laughs> Freddie, Why wouldn't you? You look at Freddie and, or even Sybil, who's ongoing with Copper. Uh, you don't know where that's going to go, which in itself is kind of fun because it really allows you to just play the moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the preparation. I don't know where it's going to go for me tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> None of us know where it's going to go for us. Yeah. And that's really important that you replicate that when you're doing theater, for instance. And, and uh, so it's nice kind of in film that you take it episode by episode, uh, in TV, I should say. Um, so in TV, it's, it's more an episode by episode basis and... Um, trying to find visuals for me is also really helpful. Luckily, with this last one with Freddie, Brian showed me Rebecca Brooks right off the top, who's uh, nasty. Well, I shouldn't. She has not innocent till proven guilty. Uh, she's she's a journalist in the UK uh, who's accused of some not so nice things, and um, so he had kind of given me that visual to work with. So. 
I already had kind of a visual reference. I already had some journalistic reference. Uh, I could read. There was a Vanity Fair article on mm -hmm. her. I also could tap into the Tom Harris novels, little bits and pieces, because I knew that we were kind of maintaining that kind of reprehensible <laughs> attitude uh, that he has in the books. It wasn't, we weren't particularly softening that mm -hmm. part of her uh, moral core. Uh, so that kind of research comes into it when I'm doing um, another role. Often I listen to music, I create a soundtrack, uh, particularly for theatre yeah. especially. I tend to listen to the same music while I'm doing an, a whole theatre show. and huh. Just whatever kind of helps you jump into that moment and get into that headspace. And, and otherwise, Katie Boland. <laughs> <laughs> I do not have much of a method. I really... I admire uh, I admire actors who are always present and and generous on a set and in and, and really strive to be in that moment. So I mean, I kind of like to see what comes out of that comes out of showing up and being present and of course, learning the lines and doing the thoughts and uh, talking out sometimes my partner and I I'll talk out the scene with him and be like, does this make sense? I think this is where I'm coming from, et cetera, et cetera. But apart from that, it's really about play. Yeah, That's nice. the number one thing I love about a good set is that people are willing to play. Yeah. And, and on films especially, you have a little more time. On TV, you don't have as yeah. much time. But whenever um, a director is generous enough to give you a little bit of time to rehearse and play, it, it's wonderful. And it's my favorite part about doing these. <laughs> <laughs> I love being in a rehearsal hall. <laughs> I love getting things wrong. <laughs> and I, I think that's I think that that Katie Boland is <laughs> I love how I she's say. like a full name now. <laughs> Katie Boland. Katie. Katie Boland. Now Katie Boland. Uh, that is what I would say is is the number one thing when I prepare for something is I look for how to get it wrong. Because I think when we feel what is inauthentic to a character, we start to discover what is authentic to the yeah, character. Yeah, that makes sense. Hmm. It's oh. like, oh, oh, this just appeared in my head. It's like on Hannibal in the first episode where he says you got to show the negative to see the positive. Mm. Nice. That Which was really creepy. Yeah, it was really creepy. Oh, yeah. man. That, oh. Stop. Mm. But I love the fact that, well, when you brought back Hannibal, two, you mentioned soundtracks for, like, you know, you're, mm. for setting up a theater play or whatever. What would be on Freddie's iPod? Uh, Freddie's iPod, I'm trying to remember what I was listening to. It doesn't always actually completely relate to a character mm -hmm. in a weird way. A lot of 80s pop? <laughs> so That'd be my iPod. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, it doesn't always, you'd think like Camelot, you'd think I was listening to classical music and I wasn't at all. It was very modern, very forwardy hmm. kind of stuff. Um, Knight's Tale Queen stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of that, that kind that of way. feel to it. Uh, there was a, a great soundtrack for that one in particular that Peter Mooney, who's also a great Canadian actor, was on that show with me and he lent me some of his songs that he was listening to during Camelot. So I can't even tell you some of the names wow. of the songs that I would listen to as I was reading scripts. Um, Freddie tends to, to be more... Uh, uh, actually, I don't even know that Freddie was just listening to modern stuff, really, <laughs> that had a little electronic edge to it a lot of the time, uh, which ironically then, and I, again, I can't really, like, I, I put on uh, my, what is the radio thing, and I find a radio station mm -hmm. and kind of go with that sometimes yeah. when I'm reading. Um, with theater, I tend to stick to, like, when I was playing Juliet, I was listening to Alexi Murdoch, so I had... Alexi Murdoch, every single right. day before the show, I would go for a walk and listen yes. to Alexi Murdoch. Right. And that was, I would go through his stuff. Um, whereas on, in TV stuff, I tend to just put on the blues station or whatever it is, whatever right. I feel. So it was more like jazz electronic kind of stuff that she was listening <laughs> to a lot of the time. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, that was it. And yeah, Bridget on Camelot was more... I wish I knew the name of the band. There's one song that immediately pops into my head when I think of Bridget, and I, I can't think of the name of the band because I didn't know it. It was something about... You'd have to do that Shazam thing and I'm singing it now. Maybe someone can Shazam that. That's awesome. No, because what I know when I write, I like to have... I, I have literally a soundtrack that I use when I write as well, so it's, it can't be 
Ooh, they were cool. It's got to be a complete score. Yeah, I was going to say, it can't, can't be too distracting. Score. Yeah, it's, so I totally get that. It's, yeah. Yeah, you find your way into the character. That yeah, way. you just yeah. Find, find the hook. That was, I think, I think the Juliet one was the most I ever really used the music. Oh, no, and when at Stratford, I was playing Queen Victoria uh, in a show at Stratford. At, as she was at 19, Queen Victoria, 18, 17, whatever age she was. Um, I think I was 19 and she was supposed to be 17 or something. Anyway, and that, that was another time that it was a hook. Every time before a show, I would listen to Schubert. Oh, nice. And that happened to, that was actually tied in more to Queen Victoria herself. But it was every time before I would, I would listen to Serenade, which still is one of my absolute favorite Schubert pieces. And that was, I'd walk around in circles and listen to the music, and that's kind of... And the shoulder would come back. Yeah, and, and then everything, and then your body kind of finds it. And with yeah. Juliet, it was Alexi Murdoch had, his music was so um, wistful and, and about, he's just all about love. And to, whether it's happy or sad or whatever it was, and... and it got me also into this outdoorsy feel, this kind of breath that she had as a, as a young girl that allows the freedom then in my body that I would feel listening to this music and kind of feeling that breath move within me. It was great. Anyway. That's so cool. That's Katie Boland. <laughs> yeah, Katie, Katie Boland. <laughs> How many episodes is Hannibal this season? Um, it was 13. Yeah. And it's not anymore. Oh, that's right, because they, they pushed one off the, off the grid because yeah. of Boston. Yeah. yeah, it was Boston, and it was also oh, yeah. some, you know, Sandy Hook as well. Uh, yeah. And it was an episode that was shot well before that, and I, I think there was sensitive matter that they knew when, when um, that tragedy happened, which was... Uh, I think they knew there was some sensitive matter that they were getting into, and, and I think Brian's right to, to be doing right. these. I mean, yeah, it's it's not when like life goes ahead and imitates art <laughs> instead. Yeah, it, it can, well, and I, I, I think in the press release he was, saying, he was saying, you know, he doesn't want anyone. It's one thing to have an experience with Hannibal where you're disturbed or something, but it's another thing when it speaks so closely to the heart of some really severe problems in our society right yeah. now. Mm. And we need to have intelligent conversations about those problems in our society, but we don't always need to enact them in this fantastical yeah. way. Right. And I think he felt that just the psychological aspects, it seemed to be, it seemed to be that that's what the decision stemmed from. So I totally respect that decision. Yeah. So now yeah. there's 12 episodes. Yeah. Uh, and I know they're airing... And we're at the, what, like four? We're at four, yeah. Okay. And I know they're airing this week before our episode, which now would be four, but is not four anymore. Um, they're airing little snippets of Will and Hannibal, I believe. Cool. From that episode. That's cool. That don't have to do with that subject matter. Uh, just so you can continue to see their the romance yeah. and continue yeah. to see yeah. the character, which I think is also really smart. That's cool. But I, I don't think it'll be... I love that Gina nice. Torres is playing Lawrence Fishburne's oh. wife. <laughs> she's beautiful. She is. She's so good she's on wonderful. suits and she's wonderful in this. Yeah. So I think people will love her. She needs to come on our show. <laughs> She's very she tall. Be. I met her once. <laughs> <laughs> She's lovely. <laughs> but yeah, although there's always the chance though that when Hannibal hits DVD slash Blu-ray, that, that episode Yeah, well, really I, and, and I believe that that episode is going to air in one of the other, oh my goodness, I think it's like 70 or 80 countries that we wow. are in. It's sold everywhere. Isn't that amazing? It's sold That's everywhere. That's gotta blow your mind. It's, it's crazy. It's, <laughs> I, I see, um, I have, have Brian on my Twitter, and, and I see every time he welcomes, he says, welcomes another country to the dinner table. And That's it's disturbing. like all these different countries <laughs> that get welcome to the dinner table. And I go, oh my goodness. It's, it's amazing. That's but cool. Mass has a huge, I mean, Lawrence yeah. has a worldwide following. Yeah. Mass has, like, he's, Superstar. He really over is. in Europe, and yeah. he should be a superstar everywhere in the world. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. so it's it's no wonder to me that that. Or he'll eat you. <laughs> or he'll eat you. Don't well, be rude to him. He will eat you. you know, Connie, our one of our coworkers, was uh, in the Dominican, I think, mm -hmm. uh, about two weeks ago, about almost three weeks ago now, because she got back just as I was leaving. And she was asking me about this show that she saw advertisements for, which was Hannibal. Mm -hmm. But of course, it was in the Dominican Republic, so she's like, I've heard about this new show that's going, Hannibal! <laughs> <laughs> like, you mean Hannibal? No, no, the way it's called Hannibal! <laughs> so, so she's like, now I can't think of watching the show without thinking of it like that. But I really want to see myself dubbed. Yeah, I don't know if they are, actually. I kind of actually prefer 
when I watch subtitles. something that it's subtitled, oh, yes, yeah, I yeah, like yeah. to hear yeah. the extra. But just for curiosity sake, yeah, 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 I, would, I, would like to, I would like to hear who does speak. Yeah. Somewhere. I'm sure one of the countries. You guys should done. just come over to my place some night. We'll turn the volume down and we'll and watch an episode and we'll dub it ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> we'll DVD. just make up whatever you're saying. Do the DVD commentary. <laughs> There's people that have nothing to do with this show. <laughs> Just drinking and doing the commentary. That, that, yeah. Aaron Abrams came up with a great uh, game after episode one where he said, okay, so a drinking game for Hannibal. Okay. I like to say this the second time you watch it because personally I'm so immersed. Yeah. yeah. I don't, okay. I, I'm, I'm holding my glass of Chianti going, I want to take a drink. Oh, oh, right, I forgot to drink my wine. <laughs> I'm so immersed. Uh, but he said every time... Jack yells. Is As you said, that's your take favorite a shot moment. Or... <laughs> the, yeah, take a drink. All right. Every time Will sweats. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> take a drink. Uh, he added himself in every time uh, he comes in and argues with someone as this crime scene investigator. Because oh, in the pilot he did that. He was like, no, 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 no. This is the way it goes. Uh, so every time that Brian Zeller argues with someone, and every time Hannibal serves meat that may be questionable. <laughs> that may be questionable. That's yeah. everything. <laughs> I like examine every time he's got to be plate of food. You've got to be drinking. Okay. Food. I'll have to develop a taste for red wine. <laughs> That's fine. I can do that. I thought that was a great game that he... he That's wicked. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> I mean, you should be playing at home, is mm-hmm. what I'm saying. Now that you know the rules, yeah, uh, yeah, I'll do that. The second time Sometimes I don't even know what meat it's supposed to be. <laughs> they have a great... If you go on um, the production blog, I think it is, mm-hmm. or the blog, NBC is having the, the sh- uh, or a chef... <laughs> who is amazing, who cura- curated, I guess we can say that, curated <laughs> that the, the uh, food on the show, which, right. as you've seen the show, the food looks amazing, yes. and this is also why Jack deserves an Emmy, because uh, to shoot food is very hard. Yeah. It's hard to make food look beautiful, and the food looks beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they're posting recipes, I believe. That's you amazing. Can go wow. on and make the dishes that are served. And every episode is named after a. a yes, okay. after a dish. I do like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. I mean, just oh, creative, Brian. <laughs> yeah, the guy's a hack. He doesn't know what yeah. he's yeah. doing. He's, he's a two. <laughs> oh, he's so smart. Yeah, it's it's so good. <laughs> now, if we're to wrap it up. Yeah. What can we look forward to from Freddy? Is there a favorite moment for you that's coming up? A favorite Without... spoiler for you. Yeah, spoiler for you, of course. I get, I get really nervous about this. Yeah, look at her. I always... She's giving you the eye. <laughs> <laughs> Don't answer that. <laughs> no, I always I always get really paranoid about what I'm allowed to say and what I'm not allowed to say. And, and, oh, yeah, we and, want spoilers but, for sure. But, but mainly also because I think the, the huge spoiler really is already that we know Hannibal's a serial killer. Yes. So that's already, I think that in itself is enough to get people wanting oh, to keep yeah. coming back. Yeah. But I think it's safe to say that we can expect Freddie to be getting into the same messes that she usually gets into. I mean, if you know the Tom Harris novels, you, you know kind of the mythology and you know the trajectory and, and uh, Brian's playing with that and, mm. and will continue to play with that and, and perhaps use it and maybe not. We'll find mm. out. Shake it up a bit. So, uh, we'll, yeah, we'll see what happens with her and how much of, of the novel is completely faithful. And, and uh, I know Red Dragon is planned for season four. So, oh. so uh, fans have to support us till then. If you want to see Red Dragon, keep watching because you'll see it in season That's four. That's cool. Mm. That's very cool. Because I kept one, you know, I kept like where uh, it shows. Will giving his little speeches there at the academy. Yeah. And I, I swear there, I thought there was gonna be an homage or somebody would just say Clar- Clarice at one point. Mm-hmm. I'm just hoping that shows up at some point. Not even just as a throwaway. Well, That's here's another. This is to fans out there who love the show. I know he's been on it. Brian's been saying. So if you want Clarice to show up, you gotta really shout for it because he does not have the rights to that character yeah. yet. And they oh, haven't yeah. given him the rights to the Silence well, of the Lambs sense. character. Yeah. So he has the rights to all the Red Dragon characters. So if you really want Clarice, you have to yell to... Is it MGM that owns Silence of the Lambs? Yes. Yeah, so you have to yeah. make a big stink, yell at MGM and say, please, he's... Brian is a smart, intelligent, wonderful person. <laughs> Give he's him not going to hurt her. He's not going to hurt her. Give him the rights to this character. Yeah, see, so yeah, I'm... I'm 
I would love for Clarice to show up, sure, but I, I like even just the idea of a throwaway. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like, well, like, I mean, because yeah, like, it has to. It'll be a, like a while before the oh, character yeah. could show up because yeah. she was just in training yeah, anyway. Exactly, but yeah. just the fact that you know she's walking by in the background or whatever, and somebody goes, "Hey, Clarice," and you see a character turn. I'm like, "That's fine. That's all I need. <laughs> Carry on with the show." Yeah. Well, and it's Jodie Foster. There's already <laughs> mentions of I know Red Dragon, the the very first episode. Um, that if you if you read kind of follow Brian on Twitter if you want to know mm-hmm. any of this <laughs> so much but it's yeah. great uh, and and the there's a nod to uh, Francis Dollarhide in that very first scene uh, oh, where well. Will goes into and sees the woman on the ground dead and, and makes the comment oh, about she's paralyzed but she's not dead etc. Yeah. Right. that may uh, Brian was was tweeting about it saying it may be related. I love how much of that you like all of this you remember. I mean, because you've shot like My 15 episodes. My brain is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, it's fresh for us because we've just seen it. You're just yeah. drilling it off like you remember it. It's amazing. I don't know how my brain remembers. I love good stories, so I think my brain just remembers a good story. Yeah. I do love knowing that Hannibal's the serial killer. Oh, yeah. Like, it, in a way, it makes me feel smart because none of the other characters know, but at the same time, <laughs> it also makes it more stressful and tension filled to watch yeah. it because I never know yeah, what the hell he's going to yeah. do, but I know he's going to do something because you know, like it. I feel the same with, um, I started watching Bates Motel, and I'm like, mm. you know, Freddie Highmore is a, an adorable little guy, and, and he's like, so charming as Norman know Bates, he's go. so cute, but he's Norman Bates! I know exactly where it's going! <laughs> his relationship with his mother is not okay, and at the same time, <laughs> it's not he's okay. just trying to be a good boy. <laughs> Like Lindsay just shaking his head. <laughs> Lindsay's like, are you done yet? Aren't you done talking? Get out before they bring up the cats. Get out before they bring up the cats. Yeah. Oh, the cats. <laughs> That's all. I have pictures. She does. Largely, that is amazing. We are so glad you had time to come in. Well, Thanks for having me. It's great to chat. I'm, I'm completely now hooked on Hannibal, so... Good. And I honestly, I wouldn't have even started if, one, it wasn't Maz or Lawrence, but the fact that we knew you were on it and you were in town. That was kind of like the yeah. hook for me. Like, yeah. if I see it, I don't know what I'm talking about kind of thing. And we saw Katie's totally book club. I'm like, that's what goes on Hannibal. We should see if Katie can hook us up with her. <laughs> and then like a week later, we're, at, we're yeah, all at the, 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 at the screenwriting which, conference. Can we the screenwriting amazing. conference yeah. for next year? Because it was so good this year. Yeah. yeah. The screenwriting yeah. conference. So good this yeah. year. Please, people, keep yeah. checking it out next year. I think yeah. that, that's what It was like just overwhelmingly... Grow. Yeah. Huge. It was, yeah. <laughs> we were splitting up all the time to try and yeah. cover as we were, much as possible. It was. I was crazy. saying that uh, we were taking notes for the blog to post, like you know, a review mm-hmm. of what was happening. But halfway through, even the first day, I had stopped making notes for the blog and started making all these notes for my writing. For yourself. Yeah. 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 I think I even uh, after my panel, uh, we were doing just little interviews after the panel, and I think I. I think there's a video on YouTube of this interview that I was doing after the panel where literally I was so excited to see Bo Willimon because <laughs> I wanted to hear what he had to say and I got to spend time with him later which was wonderful at, at the speaker's dinner but I was so excited to hear what he had to say that that I knew the session was starting and she was asking me questions and, and she kind of said, okay, great, and I, the, I ran <laughs> and you can see it on YouTube. I leave the frame, completely leave the frame and she's left there going, great, <laughs> and that was <laughs> that was Lara Jean right there. That's awesome. Talking to us about the screenwriting conference and running off. <laughs> All right, now do you have anything? Oh, you're shooting Copper. I'm shooting Copper, and season two is. They're gonna hate me for not knowing the exact air date, but it's June mm-hmm. of this. Yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah. season two, watch that. Um, Please Come Mister Know It All is in theaters in Toronto at the Royal on. Help me out, 16th, 17th, 18th, the long weekend, May long nice. weekend. Oh, cool. And then it will be, it's sold to TMN, so you can check it out on TMN. Sweet. Please yes. do. Uh, I play a quirky, uh, lovely character who is so different from Freddy and so um, <laughs> warm, I would say, as opposed to <laughs> Freddy's sociopathic nature. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely have, yeah, those things coming up. Excellent. So you're a busy girl. I'm a busy girl. Which is awesome. Yeah. Our Jean. Thank you so You're much awesome. for having me. So awesome. That's a and we didn't even talk cats. We didn't even talk Not cats. much. <laughs> yeah, that's a, Despite that's, my best efforts. <laughs> that is not a bad way to start uh, coming back from holiday and film festivals. Right yeah. before we jump into hot dogs. 
<laughs> Sue, welcome back, back to the show. Hooray! And I think, yeah, we're going to wrap it up and go home and, and whatnot. Feed the cats. Feed the cats. <laughs> All right. So, Lindsay, over on the op panel there, thank you very much, as always. Lindsay? Who won't wait for the camera, apparently. He's, he's too cool. He's too cool for the camera. It's funny that won't, because she gets stressed out. It's funny that she gets stressed out. <laughs> and, yeah, so, Sue, thank you very much. Tim, thank you for having me. And for watching and our awesome guests, this is Tim from the My Rails and Smithy TV scene. Hey, good night. <laughs> you hey. went all Fonzie for a second there. <laughs>